Hey friends and welcome to this week's show. show, 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 show. <laughs> it's after a flying start. Hey friends and welcome to this week's show. Episode number four. One, two, three, four shows in the lockdown. Yes, that is right. I can't believe that we're here. And I can't believe that you're here. Thanks for watching. And what a great start to show number four. Absolutely not a clue what I'm saying. Completely lost the ability to speak. Let me tell you about what's happening on this show. Tonight we have the incredible Dominic Halpin from uh, Dominic Halpin and the Hurricanes, Dominic Halpin on the Honey Peas, Dominic Halpin and the everything else. He's an incredible singer, guitar player, um, writer, performer, musician. He makes films. He's got original songs. He's terrific and you're going to love him. I can't wait for him to sing for you. He's going to perform an original song and a cover version as well during the show. We're also joined by the amazing Mr. Paul Burling, who many of you may remember uh, from Britain's Got Talent. He was the impressionist that came out and did Harry Hill and loads of other brilliant impressions, made it all the way to the final. He's a good friend of mine too, and he's going to be great on tonight's show. I can't wait to bring him out and meet you. As well as that, we've got uh, a clip from my show, as always. We've got uh, something I've, I've given in to requests that have been made. Every week, people ask me two things. Um, what, both, both of them are lovely. Uh, uh, one thing is people ask, where can we get mugs? How can we support the show? So I've sorted that out this week at last. And the other thing is people say, why does Joshua, my son, not have his own section on the show? He's hilarious. So this week I've uh, put together some videos to give him his own little section. And I'm sure that you're going to enjoy seeing that. So uh, look forward to that and I'll show you a little few clips of Joshua. We've also got uh, the quiz, as always, where someone will win a prize. And the prize is the same as always. It is one of the aforementioned mugs. We've got the uh, Mark James Modern Magic mug here. Uh, that's the box that it comes in. And uh, this is what the mug looks like itself. I'm drinking out of it. I'm drinking a Pepsi. Oof, and nothing else from it. So that is the uh, the prize that is being given away tonight, the Mark James mug. Uh, you can win that as always, but I'm also going to give you an opportunity to get those for yourselves at the end of the show. So there you go. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Um, I've got a brilliant video from my friend Taylor that I'm going to share. My friend uh, Phil Phillips has just commented saying, that mug is mine. Evening, mate. Good luck, Phil. I hope you win it. If you want to say hello, by the way, drop a comment in the comments right now. Do it straight away. Uh, there's a slight delay of about 15 seconds, but I'll read them out when they come up and I'll say hello to you. So uh, here we go. I need a mug in my life. Let's add these to the broadcast. There we go. Phil Phillips says, evening, mate. That mug is mine. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Michael Ross Williams says, I need a mug in my life. My wife would say, sure as he has one, me. We're off to a flying start with the comedy, folks. There you go. <laughs> Very good, Michael. So, yeah, um, I, my friend Taylor has provided me with a video, a really funny short story that is in his show. And uh, he sent it to me, and I thought it was hilarious. So I asked him if I could share it in this, and he said yes. So that's what's coming up in tonight's show. Very excited. Let's take a look to see if there are any comments. Uh, Shell is sharing the show. Oh, yeah, this is the big one. Um, I'd really like to get this show up to the highest viewing figures we possibly can. So if you could, please um, take a moment and click share. Just hit share right now on the video. You're watching it. So if you're watching it, hopefully I'll see uh, 30 shares appear right now. Just click share. Share it straight to your timeline. No comments or anything. Just hit share and hopefully more people will see and enjoy it. If you could all do that now, that would be amazing. You'll make my life and hopefully more people will see the show. Um, so here we go. Let's read out the comment. Shell sharing it. Michael's going to share it. Um, Phil Phillips wants the mug. Abigail. Hey, Abigail. You're back. Nice to see you. I hope you got your. Uh, I hope you got your coursework and everything handed in for your uh, for your your thing. Uh, Gail Green. Hello, Mark. Hey, from Gail and Jack. Nice to see you both. Right. It's time. Every week, I'm going to put an apple sours in the mug. Mug shot. Can I get a sound for that? There you go. I'm not sure that's the one we we're looking for. Maybe this. Okay, so it's time for me to share some magic. Let's get on with the show. Um, this Christmas just gone, I performed in a show called The Chroma Pier Christmas Show. And the year before, I was lucky enough to perform in that show too. It was super fun. Last year's show, not the, the one before, the one just gone, I closed my part in the show by juggling some boxes. They're called cigar boxes. And uh, it's always been one of my favorite things to do. I close my show with it all the time now. Um, many of you who are watching that have seen me performing live shows might have seen this before, but this is a nice video of it. What's funny is actually, as it's from almost two years ago, you'll notice that I'm looking a little bit more heavy set than perhaps I am now. Um, so I hope you enjoy that too. But uh, check out the video. Here is my cigar box juggling. Uh, don't forget, by the way, with the quiz, all of the answers to the quiz are contained in the show. As always, no prior information needed. Just watch the whole show. You'll have everything you need for the answers. So here comes cigar box juggling. 
you in. Now you've probably been wondering what these boxes here are. These here are called cigar boxes and once upon a time they would have had cigars inside them but now they've been sealed up and they are hollow. Let me tell you a little bit about them. If you put them together and then move them apart all they will ever do is fall on the floor. The reason is there's no sticky tape, trap doors, magnets or mirrors that will help me accomplish what I'm about to show you. About a hundred years ago jugglers and vaudeville performers like W.C. Fields would use these simple props to entertain and it's for that reason that I present them to you now in the Cigar Box Tango. Here we go. Oh, late. Uh, oh, late. Just so you know, it's not supposed to be funny. <laughs> it's supposed to be charming. Okay. Now you can see that I'm currently only messing around with three of these boxes. There are six over there on the stool, totaling nine. Sorry, I have to do that. I'm sponsored by Dropbox. <laughs> Let's get on to the nine box trick. Here we go. Now, as promised, they are not in any way stuck together, apart from the occasional bit of condensation. But trust me, it does not help. Here we go. The nine box trick. Starting with one. Two. Six, seven, eight, nine! <laughs> you are right, that is cheating, so I will do this last one with my eyes closed. I meant I did all right, fine, both eyes closed. <laughs> You can all do that, can you? <laughs> and stay down there until you learn it. It's all right, Max, I'll get it. You just stay there. <laughs> okay, big finish, big finish. So friends, there it was, a bit of cigar box juggling. I really hope you enjoyed watching that. It's always been one of my favorite things to do in the show. Uh, thank you for all of the uh, great comments uh, that you've just put up there. Uh, thank you, Shell, and to Michael. That's such a lovely comment. I appreciate that, Shell. I haven't performed at a wedding in quite a long time, so I'm thrilled that you, uh, you saw it. Thanks so much. Um, right, so here we go then. We are about to bring on my first guest, and I'm thrilled to introduce you to him. He is a dear friend of mine, one of the nicest people I ever met in show business, and he is a great performer. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we welcome into the show the one and only Mr. Dominic Halpin. Hey, Dom. Hello. How are you, mate? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> great pleasure to have you here. It's good to be here. You look, you look yeah, well, and that's ever. what a setup you've got there. The two guitars there on the wall. Yep, that's that's uh, my other kids. Yep, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that, surrounded that's, by them. That's a beautiful guitar you're playing. What kind of guitar is that? Yep, this is uh, it's a it's a Gretsch um, Black Falcon Limited thingy majig. You know, a yeah. Gretsch. It's like the one that Marty McFly plays in Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, it's very nice. That's him, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so Dominic, you and <laughs> one of your favourite films, isn't it? It is my favourite film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wasn't it the other angel, angel, earth angel, will you be mine? That's exactly it. Great songs. Yeah. So you and I, we met uh, on a cruise ship in the Caribbean. Was it uh, seven or eight years ago? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Some years ago now, that was good. Yeah, a good cruise. Yeah, and we became we fast friends and you like magic too and do a little bit of it yourself yeah. every now and again. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I love the old, uh, I, got into, I got into coin magic many years ago as a, as a sort of kid and uh, got uh, 
JB Bobo's magic, uh, you know, the modern coin magic. Yeah, yeah. And just loved it, you know, just coins in the hand and sort of doing all that. It was fantastic, you know, coin rolls and coin stars and yeah, you know, all the little stuff. Love it, you know. Well, Dom, I've always been a big fan of you as a uh, as a singer, and uh, I believe you're about to play one of your original songs for us now. Yeah. I was going to try uh, a, a song that I recorded quite a few years ago called Senor Blue. Okay. So I'll give it a go, eh? Dom, I can't wait. Please take it away, friends. Please put your hands together for Mr. Dominic Halpin. <laughs> Call me Miss Your Lonely. Call me Senor Blue. I'm missing you like crazy, and I don't know what to do. If I were to go out, surely it would rain. Seems that Mother Nature, she feels the same. When the poets write about love, tell me what they're thinking of. Have they ever seen inside where the heartaches go and tears just flow? Call me Miss Your Lonely, call me Senor Blue, lighthouse on a rock with a slide on you. Memories are breaking, crashing all around, I gotta swim away before I drown. When the poets write about love Tell me what they're thinking of Have they ever seen inside Where the heartaches go And tears just flow That was fantastic. Such a great song. Thank you. Thank you. I, um, Available on eBay. Yeah. No. I just want <laughs> to get on an a... album I, called, uh, I wrote a while ago called Traditional. Okay. And um, it's, but we, we've never played that live. We need to because I, 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 that's the first time I've, I think I've played it. I might, I might have played it once, but I've never played that. So, yeah. Well, it's a lovely song. I, um, I want to give a second plug actually to um, another, another oh, song of yours. Fantastic which um, is called Lonely Tear, and we made a music video for it, didn't we? And I was in it. That was great. That was a great fun night, wasn't it? Yeah, the Cinnamon Club, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll post a link to it after the show in the comments, and folks, please check it out, because uh, Don made a great music video where he plays a ventriloquist, and I'm the host and compere, and uh, he sings another original song, and it's great. And Don, I'm really pleased to say that there was a ton of nice comments came in while you were singing, so I can't wait for you oh, to watch that's... it back and, uh, and see them all. Mate, we're going to have you back at the end of the show. Um, thanks so much for coming on. I can't wait to hear your second song. One more time, okay. folks, let's hear it from Mr. Dominic Halpin. Wow, wasn't that great, folks? Absolutely a brilliant singer, such a nice, lovely guy. We've been friends for a lot of years, and uh, such a thrill to be able to uh, have him on the show. Now, let's, uh, let's carry on in this carnival-like uh, atmosphere, and let me, uh, let me get to the next part. I'm accidentally opening up all sorts of apps, and things are going crazy, but it's all going well. So, the next thing on the show is I get to share with you a little feature about my son, Joshua. Um, lots of people said to me, Josh was the star of the show when I used to make these vlogs. Every week for three months, I made a weekly vlog. Um, I talked about my life and I showed things that were going on and I went to gigs and I did everything. And I put it all on video. And um, 
you guys were really kind then and watched them and shared them. So I've cut together one and a half minutes of clips of Joshua's best bits, and I think it's pretty funny. So I hope you like it. Here it is. This is uh, one and a half minutes of my son Joshua being my son Joshua. Here he comes. <laughs> what do you eat with catfish? I don't know. What do you eat with catfish? Meow knees. <laughs> walking as always. This time I got the boy with me. Do you like walking up the hill, buddy? No. Why? Because I just have a little Can we crush it? Yes. Mwah. So you've got a teddy bear, which means when I get in bed, I've got two teddy bears. <laughs> Mwah. I love you, kid. Good night. What's in it anyway? A severed head. What? Can you take it back? No, I'm kidding. It's only half a severed head. What? Can you just keep it now? No, it's not really half a severed head. Is that a quarter of a severed head? <laughs> no, but there will be in a second. Ah! Get your weapon. That's a very whiskey strategy. <laughs> I've grown a whisker. Join. <laughs> 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 I'm going to try, try, try and throw my dad off. off. Oh, I'm saying. Saying. What, what I'm, I'm saying. saying. I'm moving. I'm moving. Well, well, I'm moving, moving when he doesn't, doesn't even, even realize. realize. <laughs> 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 what a low. Legendary. What did I tell you? Anything else? I love you. Oh, I love you too, buddy. And also, Piggly Wiggly. You're a butt bag. <laughs> so there he was, my son Joshua being uh, being hilarious. That's his favourite joke. What do you eat with catfish? Meow nays. What else? Folks, it's time to bring back a very short segment, uh, a, a much shorter segment than it was last week, but as you enjoyed it so much, it's time once more to take a look at the vinyl countdown. I know you all only like this because of the theme tune. <laughs> Yes, it's time for the vinyl countdown. Let's uh, switch up the cameras and I think we'll go to that one. There we go. So let's take a look at the records. Only going to talk about three records this week. Record number one that I would like you to check out is this, Ryan Adams, Blue Stars. It is an absolutely terrific record. It is a live album, just like uh, I talked about last week was a Ryan Adams live album. He really is great live. This record is interesting because the first two tracks are both brand new. He opens the gig by saying, um, I never played these two songs before, but I wrote them in the sound check and I'm going to play them for you now. And the first one, Dear Anne, I absolutely love, but the track of the album for me is... Um, when the Stars Go Blue, and uh, that is it. The album's called Blue Stars, but When the Stars Go Blue, that is my favourite record. It is also, um, it's on Spotify, of, uh, actually is it? I don't know if it is on Spotify, but if you listen to When the Stars Go Blue by Ryan Adams, you're going to love it anyway. Um, so that's, tra that's album number one. There are only three. Number two this week. Jack White, Acoustic Recordings. This is a beast of an album. It's a double vinyl. It has absolutely loads of great stuff in it. Um... And it's all acoustic versions of songs that you'll know from the White Stripes and uh, all of Jack White's other sort of ventures in music, of which there are many. So check that out. That is Jack White, um, Acoustic Recordings, a great rock record. And uh, album number three, the last one. This is my favourite record of, um, of last year, I think. Uh, Sam Fender, Hypersonic Missiles. This guy is from the Northeast, South Shields. He is absolutely terrifically good. And uh, this album is killer. Every single song on it is brilliant. So uh, check out Sam Fender, Hypersonic I'm hiding behind the record. Um, <laughs> Sarah put my turn next week. She wants to pick the records. It's not going to happen. I've got too many songs to talk about. Um, so yeah, check this out. Sam Fender, Hypersonic Missiles. Now, having said that, um, I'm going to post a link in the comments as well to... Um, a playlist that I made on Spotify, which is of uh, songs that I think you guys will like. It's 15 artists, two songs each. There are 30 songs altogether, for those of you that are not so hot at maths. And uh, it's, I'm going to post the link to this playlist that I made, and it's public. And then you'll be able to listen to what I'm listening to this week. Let's play out the final countdown. <laughs> Sorry, I messed it up. Do 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 do
There it is, the vinyl countdown. Applause for that, for myself. Self praise is no praise. So, there we go. Right, on to the next section, uh, out of the vinyl countdown. Because now I'm about to share a little bit of, um, a little bit of a funny story that my friend Taylor sent me from his uh, show. When we come back from this clip, we're going to welcome on the one and only Mr. Paul Burling. Now, this is what I want you to think of while you're watching Taylor's clip. Paul is a multi-talented impressionist. He can impersonate... Um, Harry Hill, characters from The Simpsons, characters from Family Guy, Donald Trump, um, all sorts of hosts of characters. Alan Carr um, is great. Uh, he does Graham Norton, loads of, great, um, loads of great people from TV. Use that list that I just gave you there and think of a situation that you'd like to see those characters in and then comment them when Paul is on in the comments. Say, for instance, Alan Carr wants a cheeseburger and can't get one. If required, I will play the other character in the sketch. Don't ask me to do any impressions, though. I can't do any. But I will do the other character in the sketch, and uh, we'll have an improv conversation with Paul, and we'll see what we can do. And then Paul will do the impressions, and uh, we'll have a chat about his life and career. So here's a story from Taylor. Uh, you're going to love it. It's really, really funny. It's a minute and a half long, and then we'll be back with Paul. People always wonder, we live in L.A., do you see a lot of celebrities? Which is funny. Like, I fly southwest, so you see no celebrities. Um, <laughs> I was, I was flying here, and, uh, and the girls were in the Southwest Terminal, and they're like, I wonder if we're going to see Taylor Swift, and I'm like, not in this terminal, uh, not in this terminal. But my sister, the first time she saw a celebrity, she didn't know how to handle herself. She was in 7-Eleven, and for you to understand the story, you need to know my sister is a tall, beautiful woman. She's in 7-Eleven, and she's hanging out, and all of a sudden she hears, excuse me. She looks around, she doesn't see anything. Thinks, maybe I ate too much pizza last night. Goes to get a drink again. Excuse me. She looks around. Then she looks down, and it's Vern Troyer, who played Mini-Me in the Austin Powers movies. <laughs> My sister didn't know how to act, because she had just seen the movie, and she was kind of geeking out a little bit. And Vern holds up a cup, and he goes, will you help me? And this is when my sister should have said, absolutely, sir, what can I get you? Borrowed the cup and filled his drink. But instead, she bent down. <laughs> held Vern Troyer, full Simba, up to the fountain. And the best part is, Vern acted like this happened every day. He was so cool about it. So, friends, there was Taylor. Uh, <laughs> that story kills me. She bent down and picked him up. Full Simba. <laughs> Full Simba. That line kills me every single time. Fern Troyer, may you rest in peace. So, um, we're about to bring on my next guest, but I am not going to introduce him. I'm going to have the nation's favorite presenters introduce him. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes the intro. Here he is again tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome... And in true style, here he is! He's doing great, he's doing great, man, he's doing great! <laughs> he's off the mark, we're there! How are you, mate? Oh, it's so lovely to see you back on the tally. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm so well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm absolutely thrilled to, uh, I'm thrilled to have you on here. It's such a pleasure to see you uh, on this little show. Since we met many years ago, we are doing a show yeah. with uh, Andy Ford, is that right, when we first met? That's right, do it with the show with Andy Ford, my lover! <laughs> That's funny. Um, I've got a question for you already. Phil Phillips wants to know where you watched the 2006 FA Cup final. I was in Clapton at the Holiday Park, the Orchards. Oh, I've been there myself many times. Did you, yeah, that was did you miss uh, out? 2006, uh, the Gerrard final, they called it, because he scored that cracker when we was going to... It's going to take it to 3-3 three, three and then into extra time and penalties, which we won, obviously. <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> so, Paul, um, we met on that show. I loved your act back then. Um, you've been on Britain's Got Talent. How has Britain's Got Talent as a journey been for you? Well, mate, believe it or not, it was like 10 years ago now. That ten seems insane. Years. <laughs> I believe it. It only feels like it was literally like 11 years. But, no, it's, it feels like it was only uh, yesterday. And, um, yeah, it was great at the time. I had a great time. Met some wonderful people. And because... The year I did it in 2010, we did a, a tour around the arenas. So we actually did like Wembley Arena, and we did like um, the O2 and um, Vodafone and other great shops. And so, yeah, it was great. 
That's insane. Paul, we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of fun. I've asked people to uh, to chip in, so we'll have some yeah, <laughs> so no. folks suggest any situation, any of those characters that I mentioned, we're talking Alan Carr, um Harry Hill, um I heard you do Graham Norton before, family <laughs> family guy characters, um the Simpsons characters, yep. um <laughs> any of those people in a situation, put them in a situation and um Paul and I will attempt to act it out in a fun way. This will sink or swim. We've no idea. Um, Homer it's Simpson. Um, James it's would laugh. like to see Homer Simpson explaining one of my tricks. Okay. So what happens is Mark gets these cards. And he says, ooh, where'd you like to pick a card? And you go, mmm, I want a card. Mmm, can I eat it? No, you can't eat it. Ooh, because Mark will then eat it. And then he'll regurgitate it. And it's the card you picked. Oh, my God, it's some sort of witchcraft. Mmm, <laughs> witchcraft. Well, my favorites are always uh, Family Guy characters. Can we have a little bit of... I'll have a, I'll have a little stab at a Family Guy impression myself. If you do, Peter, sure. I'll try um, Stewie. Okay. Well, hey, Stewie. Uh, you know what you're doing, kid? You're just a you're just a baby. Uh, oh, Brian, I'm a stripper. Oh, that's so good. That's pretty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. Uh, well, yes. Also, you got some muscly arms. Ooh. Paul, my um, Michael Ross Williams has asked if you can do Graham Norton being Bruce Willis in Die Hard. Brilliant. One of my favourite films as well. I can't swear, can I? Not really. Um, okay, thank you. Um, okay. I'm trying to think of a line. Yes, yippee ki Yes, I'm so going to shoot you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Paul, that was amazing. Can we have uh, can we have a little bit of uh, your the character that a lot of people will identify you with, and I think because you have some resemblance to him in real life, is the character that was the first person we ever saw you impersonate on Britain's Got Talent. Um, Pat, who who was that character, and can we meet him? Well, I tell you what, yeah, mm, yeah. Well, the chances of that happening, yeah, yeah, mm, yeah, yeah. I like Paul Burling, yeah, and I like Mark James, but which one's best? Is the only way to find out. <laughs> Paul, I love that impression. I mean, nobody does Simon Cowell as well as that. It's incredible. <laughs> really? Are you sure? It's a yes for me. It's You know, it's funny. I've got to ask you about that. I mean, obviously, that was Harry Hill. And you, you really, I mean, it's so incredible. It's such an embodiment of that character, um, of, of him. I mean, I know he's a real person, but he plays something of a character himself. Yes, right. Yeah. And, uh, and you really take it on. I, I hear a lot of people, um, they, they often impersonate as they go on uh, Britain's Got Talent, they do Simon. Is there something about Simon's voice that you would say is quite difficult to impersonate? He seems to have quite a tricky kind of voice, I find, when people, people impersonate lots of people and they really get it spot on. But with Simon, it, it seems to be very difficult. Um, yeah, he's, cause he's, got, he's got a quite a deep voice, you know. He's sort of like, and sometimes he's sort of, you know, quite brutal. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't really think about it. I just sort of do it. Hopefully people like it, you know. I don't proclaim to be the best impressionist in the world, but um, people like what I'm doing still, so that's good. Well, I, 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 I think your impression is very good, uh, but every season you see somebody, and it's it yeah, always... Yeah, I try to do it, you know. It, it always seems to me <laughs> that uh, the impersonation of Simon is very difficult. So what is it, I'm interested when you start to formulate a voice, what is it that makes, how do you get into a voice? Do you have a sound that you hear that makes it happen, or...? This might sound a little bit weird, uh, Mark, and all the viewers and that. Or, um, I actually imagine I'm actually that person okay. in my, my mind's eye, even if it's a cartoon character. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was sort of, in my head, I see, see that person and listen to them, and then I try and do them, and then my wife, Leah, who you've met, will tell me whether it's right or not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just practice. It's like anything else, like doing magic or singing a song, or it's all about practice and stuff like that, so that's what you've got to do. Yeah. And I, I tend to do it when I'm in the car, coming back from gigs, when I used to gig, when we all used to gig, and um, I just used to be practicing on my own in the car for hours, like driving back from Cornwall or something, Yeah. and do myself. And I remember when I started doing The Simpsons, and I was doing a gig down in um, Hastings, down at the Haven Park down in Hastings many years ago, and a mate of mine said, oh, you're a big fan of The Simpsons. And I went, yeah, I love Simpsons. And I, oh, I could do Homer. You know, I could do Homer. Oh, but you see, I love me doing it. Come on, Simpson. Oh, me. You know, I love you. 
but I eat my shorts, dude. Um, but I did, he said, I'll just do crust to the clown, and I didn't, wasn't doing him then. And so all the way home, traveling for about three, four hours, <laughs> I was actually just going, hey, 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 hi, kids. Oh, is that right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so if I pulled up on, alongside somebody at traffic lights and I'm going, <laughs> hey, yeah, <laughs> they must thought I was some sort of loony. But there you go. But it's just practice, really. Yeah, it's it's, childhood. <laughs> it's incredible, like you, the way that you just switch from person to person. You know, no, it's just it's it, it blows my mind. I've always loved like impressions. Just so it's it's just incredible. So uh, lots of comments actually. I've put them up on the screen, which I know you can't see on the Skype call, um, saying how much they love the impressions. And a couple of people saying they thought your Simon Cow was bang on. So there you go. Um, thank you. You're so right because I am God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tim Hunter has asked if you can do Popeye introducing me on stage. Oh, here we go. Okay, everybody, it's now time for some magic and illusion. Please welcome Mr. Mark James. <laughs> I went into the costume there, and I. The <laughs> similar voice. Just want to say. <laughs> we have uh, we have <laughs> we have Phil Phillips wants to know if you can do Frank Spencer commentating Jared uh, Stephen Gerrard scoring the final uh, in the in the 2006 Cup final. Yeah. Oh, Stephen Gerrard is looking a little bit tired. He's been posting the ball. Oh, he sent it into the corner. <laughs> oh, he loves Stevie G. <laughs> Not as much as I love my Betty. <laughs> so Paul, I'll uh, I'll see if anyone pops some more uh, some more uh, suggestions up while we uh, while we wait for a few more to come in. Tell us um, what you're up to before the the lockdown happened. Where would we be able to see you these days? Well, um, I finished pantomime up in Leicester. Oh which yeah, was great. Wait, really which loved panto it. are you in? Sorry, which panto was it? We did Aladdin. Okay, and I was wishy washy. That was my name, not how I performed. And I was with um, Sam Bailey from X Factor and um, Anthony Costa from Blue. Okay. Uh, and uh, Nathan Connor as well. You might know Nathan as well. Uh, who's a kids presenter on uh, uh, Channel 5. Okay. And there was such lovely, with a fantastic cast. And uh, Matthew... Um, Pomeroy. That's the one. And uh, lovely Natasha. And uh, they're lovely people and had such a laugh and everybody was such good fun. In fact, we're still doing a quiz every Friday on uh, on uh, on um, on Zoom. We do oh, a really? quiz every week between all of us. Well, I know that uh, on your page you do you do daily videos as well, right? So what will we check out if we go and look there? Uh, I do weekly videos. Okay. Because the problem is it's been too sunny and too nice. And as you can tell, I'm slightly toned, <laughs> slightly toned. So me and Lee have been sat out in the garden. Okay. <laughs> Um, utilising the sun and Burling's bogs, as you know, I've got a bar in my conservatory. Look yeah. at me, showbiz. <laughs> so, and uh, so we do a quiz. Yeah, we do this quiz every week with the guys from Panto, which is great. So I did Panto, which was great success. And then after that, as you know, it always goes a bit quiet anyway in January and February and stuff. Yeah. And I was just doing some um, Haven Parks um, down the southwest. Yeah. And then, as, then it all sort of stopped, really. So um, who knows? And I was supposed to be doing uh, Blackpool on where we worked before, uh, to the, um, where was it again? In Blackpool. Sorry. The, 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 um, I can't remember either. Viva. Viva. Yeah, Viva. Viva, yes. Viva. And for a show called um, Talents of Britain with Kev Orkin. Who oh, yeah, yeah. And we're supposed to have been doing that on Easter Sunday, but obviously, sadly, that got um, got oh. pulled. But there we go. We'll hopefully do it again at some point, hopefully in the future. Hopefully, we'll all be back out there soon and doing our show. Oh, no. I just realised, Paul, we didn't hear any uh, any Alan Carr. So, um, really? can uh, can oh, Alan? Yeah, because I tell you, it's like we're looking in a mirror. I tell you, it really is. I know because I like doing Alan Carr because you get away of being a little bit naughty, which I'm not going to do tonight. I oh, know oh, it's a bit hard. But I've been doing, yeah, that's what I've been doing actually. Is um, every week um, for the clap for our carers, as so I put a video out. Okay, um, for Thursday behind night. Burling's bar, behind Burling's bar. This is sort of been sort of Michael McIntyre, and you really did, yes. Sort of like you do, know, got Burling's bar. And um, so we sit there behind. See, I've got, I've got, I've got impression Tourette's now, because um, I haven't worked for so long, and they just keep coming out. Anyway, so <laughs> she's embar embarrassing in the middle of LD. Um, but anyway, so we, um, we sort of decided I, I wanted to do something and to make sure that people go out and clap for the carers and stuff like that. So every week, every Thursday, sort of lunchtime, I put a video out, and I've done it as 
Uh, who was the first one? I did it as oh, Uncle Albert. Oh yeah. To the whole. It's right, Shay. Make sure you go out and clip for all keys. <laughs> Looks back with the beard. And um, then I did um, Wallace from Wallace and Grub. Oh, oh, make sure you clap for the cameras. <laughs> Jeez. And then uh, last week I did it as Alan. Did Alan. And this week I'm doing um, um, Harry. This okay. week. So if you go to Paul Burning Comedy Impressionist on Fear Fook. You'll see what I've done throughout the thing. But, I mean, you know, I just sort of do it just once a week because I've been enjoying the weather far too much and maybe drinking a bit too much, as we all have. Paul, we've just had a comment drop in there that uh, Abigail absolutely loved your Michael McIntyre. Really? It's sort of like, you know, it's, it's sort of, I don't know, he sort of just wobbles around a lot, you know, sort of thing, you know. Yes, hello, hello, Louis. Yes, it's so lovely to hear from you. Yes, mm. But um, also I did uh, Cracker Jack. They did a new series of Cracker Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, because I did, when after I did BGT and stuff, I did a lot of stuff on um, for kids TV on BBC and Steve Wright, you know Steve? Yeah, yeah. He was, he was legend. He did like Dick and Dom in the house and he was like producer, director and stuff like that. And when I did, I did The Slammer, which everybody remembers with Ted Robbins. Of course, yeah. Ted Robbins, oh, awesome. how's it going? And, um, we, and I was on that and then I did a thing with Dick and Dom as well. And then I got a phone call randomly last. You know, sometimes you don't hear from people for a while. And that's what it's like sometimes. And then I had this random phone call uh, from a lovely lady called Terry. And she said, Hi, Pa, we're doing, doing Cracker Jack. Would you like to be on it? And I, so I did. Wow. Which was great fun. So we did that. And that was, yeah, that came out in the new year. Just came out in the new year with um, Sam and Mark. Okay, cool. So, um, well, Paul, we've had one more uh, request, which is uh, if you could do it. When you watch this back, by the way, you'll see a ton of comments. Everyone's raving about your impressions, um, and I've been putting them up on the screen. Um, I've been asked if you can do Lee Evans. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Go on. And or Lee Evans doing something, or Lee uh, Evans just Lee, Lee Evans, Evans just being Lee Evans. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh right. Oh, flipping right. It's it's the shows. All right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> perhaps Paul my favourite we can say goodbye to you and say goodbye to Harry Hill at the same time ok well thanks very much for joining us here on Mark's, uh, Mark's great show make sure you support it every week yeah. so from me Paul Burling aka Harry Hill see you soon take care stay safe Yay. <laughs> Paul thank you so much for coming on mate it's so nice to speak to you stay thank well and we'll catch up soon Okay, love to the family. Cheers, mate. Thanks, you too, mate. Bye. Wow, how good was that having Paul on? What an absolute legend. He's so much fun. Such a nice guy. Such a great impressionist, too. Like, really, really hard-working professional in showbiz. Uh, so please do check him out. Um, You've got, uh, got to go and check out his page. It's uh, Burling underscore Paul on uh, social media and all of that sort of stuff. You'll be able to find him. Check Paul Burling on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all of the usual places. And watch his videos and check out Cracker Jack. He is absolutely brilliant. Right, before we get into the quiz, um, I'm going to tell you about the thing that lots of people have been asking me. Loads of people have asked me, how can we support the podcast and how can we get our hands on a mug? So I thought I'd try and combine the two things for you so that if you want to get a mug and support the podcast, you can. So I've not created a shop for it, but I have made a way that you can uh, PayPal and buy a mug and support the podcast, uh, not the podcast, the show at the same time. So here it is. There's, uh, there's the little page there. Um, if you want to check it out, uh, that's the mug right on screen there. And there's the price, £8 the mugs are, and uh, there is the link to it. So if you go to paypal.me, forward slash Mark James Magician or you and if you click that link by the way you can't click it but you know I'll share it as a virtual tip jar uh, or you can type it into your browser um, that will take you to a page where you can just type in how much you want to send and then you send it direct from your PayPal or you can PayPal me directly at unusualcomedy at live.co.uk and I'll put both of those things in the comments and in the uh, title of this afterwards. So if you want to get your hands on a mug, uh, just send me £8 and put in the and that includes post and all that sort of stuff and then put in the notes of sending that that you want to get a, a mug and put your address and um, I'll send you one. Simple as that. And if you want to pay extra to support the show, you can. Uh, and that's no problem either. So it's up to you guys. That has given you two ways to do that. If you want to get your hands on a mug, and just send £8 via either of those two things. So let's get back to the show. Don't forget I'm on the radio Saturday. Yes, I am. Paul Banton's radio show. Uh, Paul, 
It's Paul Berlin Comedy Impressionist on Facebook. Thank you, Abigail. I appreciate that. Um, I had it up there while Paul was on, but I'll put it in the comments as well. Um, Paul Bantin has a show as well. Paul, can you post a link to that in the uh, in the comments so people can find it? Paul is launching a radio show, and I'm talking about my three favorite songs from the movies on it on Saturday. So uh, I love music, as you probably guessed, and I like to talk about it a lot. So, Paul, if you can post a link to that... Um, I will uh, I will share it. Um, Steph has put I look so different to when I was a little C. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. I think um, I th <laughs> I know what you mean. I've been trying to lose a bit of weight. Um, eight pound for a mug, two for sixteen pound. There you go. That's the kind of uh, that's why I need someone Scottish producing this show. Thanks, Billy. There's Paul's uh, there's Paul's link. Buzz Radio UK dot online forward slash the soundtrack. I'll be on that on Saturday. Check it out. Simon says his wife charged him ten pound for the mug that she won. There you go. Uh, right, so it's time for the quiz, friends. It's time for the quiz, and then we're going to bring Dominic back. So let's have the questions up onto the screen. Here we go. Question number one. Remember, by the way, it is the first person to get all five questions in a single comment. Question number one. Which item did I juggle in the first clip? Question number two. Which brand was Dominic's guitar? It's very tricky. I'll give you a clue. It begins with a G, a G. Um, question number three. What was this week's number one record? Which record did I say was my favorite? The last one that I showed up. He was from South Shields. Question number four. Which TV personality did Paul first appear as on Britain's Got Talent? And question number five. Which number show is this? I've made a few. What number is this one? All you've got to do is get all five of those answers in the comments. And if you are the first person to do that on my screen, you will win the mug. Now, while you're all typing those answers in, flicking back through the podcast, uh, through the, why do I keep saying podcast? Flicking back through the show and who knows what else, I'm going to dial back my dear friend Dominic and we're getting get it, get it back to, uh, to sing. Um, we've had an answer up from Michael. Michael, I've got to tell you, my friend, that is not correct. I'm going to give you a clue that in case anyone tries to copy your answer. Um, you're close, but it's not the one. But you may get the answer here as Dominic comes back with that guitar. Dominic, perhaps when I bring you on screen, you could uh, flash. Well, um, I um, I wasn't quite sure, but then I heard uh, your friend Boris get on. <laughs> he's not your friend. I heard Boris get on and address the nation today, and I thought uh, he shouldn't have said anything, but he could have sang this song, and it would have probably been uh, probably been better. So um, we, we 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 go non-political on this show, but um, I'm just going to point out that you are correct. He is not my friend Boris. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, right. right, so Dom, take it away. I can't wait to hear you sing it. Ladies and gentlemen, okay. Mr. Dominic Elvin. <laughs> Smile, though your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you get by. If you smile through the pain and sorrow, smile, and maybe tomorrow you see the sun come shining through for you. Life. Up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? you find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile. Though your heart is aching, smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you get by. If you smile through the pain and sorrow, smile. And maybe tomorrow you see the sun come shining through. For you so light of your face with gladness hide. Every trace of sadness, although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? You find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile. 
Dominic, incredible again. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming on and singing for me, my friend. My we can, pleasure. We can find you on Instagram at Dominic Halpin. Your yeah, website, dominichalpin.com. MySpace. <laughs> MySpace. <laughs> All the usual places. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dom, thanks so much, mate. I'll catch up with you soon. My pleasure. Catch you soon. Take care. Much bye appreciated. Bye. Friends, here are the links to Dominic. If you want to find him online, just check out dominichalpin.com and at Dominic Halpin on Instagram. You can uh, look up all of his stuff and he posts uh, loads of videos, singing and all that sort of stuff. So please do check him out. He really is brilliant. Right. It is now time for the end of the show. So we're going to uh, put the uh, the winner up. Um, Paul's just said a nice, uh, Paul's just sent a nice message, which I'm going to throw up on screen there. Um, thanks for having me on the show, mate. Really appreciate you asking and hope everyone enjoyed my voices. Paul, we did. Thank you so much. You are an absolute superstar and a legend among men. So thank you for coming on. And um, that's Paul's wife in his picture there you can see. I know what you're thinking. Punching, right? I know. I tell him every time. Hi, Leah. Hope you well. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Um, so let's get the quiz winner announced. Here we go. Drum roll, please. The winner is... Abigail! Congratulations, Abigail. Abigail's had a good crack at this quiz every week and just been pipped to the post. So I'm glad to see she was first in with the answers tonight. Much appreciated, Abigail. Drop me a PM with your address in it and I will post the mug out to you tomorrow. There you go. Uh, so congratulations for winning to Abigail. Well done. Nice work. Michael has said a mug will be yours. Well, good luck with that, mate. Keep trying. Uh, in the meantime, by the way, again, like I said, if you do want to get your hands on a mug and support the show, you can do so right here. All you've got to do is send £8 to paypal.me forward slash Mark James Magician or PayPal directly to unusual comedy at live.co.uk. Unusual comedy at live.co.uk. That is my PayPal if you want to support the show. Much appreciated. Cheers, Mark. Makes our Monday night. That's really nice. Thank you, Simon. Uh, Abigail, thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for always watching. And from Dominic as well. Dominic says, love being on. Thanks, mate. We loved having you on. You're absolutely brilliant. Friends, that brings us to the end of another show. It has been an absolute pleasure. The time is 8.47. We did it again. Almost right on time. I'm going to get it done in 45 minutes next week. Try and be professional and be exactly right on the time. It's 45 minutes. But uh, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Shell. Great to have you all here. Thank you for watching. Great show. Great guests. We'll be tuning in next week. Stay safe. Thanks, Michael. Honestly, everyone, I really appreciate your support. Um, please keep sharing when I tell when I say that the show's going on. Please um, share the poster thing that lets people know. And um, when the broadcast actually comes on, please share the feed and everything. I'd love to get as many people as possible watching this. Obviously, making a thing like this is no small effort. Getting the guests, doing the production, um, putting the whole thing on. You know, the whole room that I make it in, everything requires. Um, it basically takes up half the week and a full day to get sorted. So uh, I'd love to see a lot of people watching it if you guys could help me out by sharing um hope to see you with andy ford in october um i want to see a magic trick with the mug here you can see a small bit of pepsi watch close i made it vanish you're welcome skills Ta-da! There you go. Great show. Again, great show. Nice one. Seriously, guys, again, thank you so much. Um, here comes the outro. It has been a pleasure to have you all on. I will see you all at 8 o'clock next Monday. You're awesome. Have